YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Obi back with another video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave me a comment, share the video, all of that. So, as you read by the title, as you obviously see by the thumbnail, we got a crazy one for you. So, as y'all know, I've been acquiring a lot of firearms throughout the 2023. So, there's no better way to start off 2024 than to do my 2024 gun collection. So, that's what we're about to do here. This is a highly requested video by my previous subscribers. So, welcome to all the new subscribers and for the people who's watching. We gotta make a bet right now. If y'all see one gun that you haven't heard of or you haven't seen before, you gotta hit that like and you gotta subscribe to the channel. But before we hop into this, I gotta let y'all know that this collection is probably not like any other collection that you see. That's why we got the one of one and we got these patches coming soon. One of one because we have everything from hood rack guns to practical to super guns to collectible guns, all different types of guns. We buy everything over here. So that's why I wanna let y'all know first, just so y'all know, so we have that bet. If y'all see one thing that y'all never seen before, y'all gotta hit that like and subscribe. All right, YouTube, so we're gonna start off with this bad boy right here, which is an AF-2011 double barrel 1911, chambered in 45 ACP, two barrels, two triggers, but the triggers are controlled. So with one pull of one of those triggers, both of the hammers are gonna go off. And if I didn't say it already, this one is chambered in 45 ACP. This thing is a heavy boy. See how thick this thing is, this thing is crazy crazy now this one this one is super hard to find like you're lucky if you get to see this one in person so that's why i had to start it off with this one now this one like i told you guys it's gonna be a lot of different stuff so it's gonna be practical non-practical like gimmicky collectible i would put this in like the collectible stage i would definitely put this in the collectible slash gimmicky a little bit so that being said, AF 2011, we're gonna have to go faster because we're gonna try, I don't wanna waste too much of you guys' time, so we're gonna, we're gonna really speed it up. All right, so next we got this bad boy, which is a Staccato XC. Look how smooth that slide is. Which is chambered in nine millimeter, which is Staccato's flagship with the comp. This thing is crazy, this thing is rocking a chili grip and an Atlas trigger, Atlas flat trigger. And this is the long one because I do have longer fingers, a lot bigger hands. So this one fits me like a glove, but this thing feels amazing with this grip. And we did get rid of that grip safety. So this thing is just like, it's just fit to me. So after seeing that double barrel, we had to bring a little something, a little bit more accurate. So that's why we brought this Staccato XC chambered in nine millimeter. Next, we got this bad boy, which is, I think this is my most recent. No, I actually don't know. This is not my most recent. Go ahead and show clear, nothing in there, safe direction. Wow, we good to go. What we have here is my Radian OD Green Model 1. We got flip up sights on here, we got an EOTech. Obviously, we got the B5 um, stock, and this thing is just crazy. This is probably the smoothest. Honestly, you know what, I'm gonna say it. In my opinion, this is the best AR-15. Oh shit, that's the button. Beast in this platform let me know what y'all think because yeah, i know people's gonna say knight's armament i know a couple others but to me this is the best and this is um 14.5 pinned and weld and this thing is running amazing y'all check out that trigger i didn't single stage trigger wow let's go ahead and see that reset and if i didn't say it already this thing is fully like actually fully ambidextrous that's the reset. So fully ambidextrous, safety on both sides, mag release, bolt release, safety, mag release, bolt release on both sides. Radian Model 1 chambered in 223 Wild. All right, so next we got a showstopper right here. Next we got a collectible piece, which is, go ahead and open it up. What we have here, is an IMI. So basically, IW, everybody knows IWI. This is when they were IMI, Israel Military Industries. This is a super rare. This is 515 out of 600. Only 600 of these were made. This was made to commem commemorate the armed forces that used to carry these to actually protect the president. So that's why they made it all glossed up and fancied up. Like this theme looks crazy. This one is chambered in nine millimeter, as you see to commemorate the armed, I think armed forces. The armed forces looks crazy. This is a super pleasure. I got this for a steal. Shout out to Granny's Gun, Gun Tote and Granny out in Oregon. Definitely helped me up with that one. All right, so next up, we have the official flagship of the channel, which is a 500 Magnum. Now this is no ordinary 500 Magnum. This is a two inch 500 Magnum, which is the hardest one to find. 
definitely the worst one to shoot hands down and you see i put these wooden grips on it because it's going to make it that much worse but it's a 2500 magnum and this thing only sees 700 grain oh! <laughs> Now, being that this is the hardest one to find, when I found another one, I couldn't pass it up. So I had to grab two. Something happens to this one, I need a backup. So two 500 Magnum, two inches, sit here on the table. The most, this is this is what's supposed to made, be made for like bear country, but I mean, I use it for wrist breaking. So that's what we're using. And sitting next to it, I have to bring something a little bit more practical. And I feel like it's the best concealed carry revolver, period which is a Smith & Wesson 327 Performance Center. This one is chambered in 357 Magnum, 38 Special. Let's go ahead and show clear with that. Now, this, you know their Performance Center. The triggers on them are just the top of the line, at least for them. But this is a one-inch barrel. Like, this is a one-inch barrel. This thing is super light. Super light, but at least they give you a full grip so you can get a good purchase on that. Like, if you want to conceal carry a revolver, definitely the one to go with. Smith & Wesson. 327 chamber in 357 magnum and 38 special so you know we had to have something that was going to offset those big 500 magnums all right youtube now let's go ahead and get this one out the way this is big bertha right here this is my 50 bmg my barrett 50 bmg m82 this is a 20 inch barrel as you see the barrel does reciprocate Ugh, actually i can't make it go right now but you know how the barrel reciprocates. This is a 50 BMG. Not much to say about this. Y'all probably seen already. One of the biggest rounds that, yeah, actually we can get. Magazine's huge, basically almost the size of my hand. This thing is probably one of the, like if you own, if you have a gun collection or if you are a gun enthusiast, this I think is the most fun you're gonna have. You have to at least experience shooting a 500 Magnum, not a 500 Magnum, a 50 BMG at least once. If I said 500 Magnum earlier, you know I meant 50 BMG, but this thing is super heavy, so we're gonna go on to the next one. Next, we have a Q product. Now we have the Q Sugar Weeds. Man, this thing just looks so crazy. I love how Q designs their rifles. I think they look so sick, so I added everything that I had to add to it to, you know, add to the fact. So right here we have, let's go ahead and show safe, make sure everything is safe, clear there, nothing in there, safe direction, bow, we in business. Right here we have a Q Sugar Weasel, chambered in 5.56 five, and 2.23. This thing is probably one of the lightest rifles that I own. One of the lightest full-size rifle. It is a full 16-inch rifle, and it does contain their best trigger ever made, but we're definitely gonna have to put that to the test because y'all know I, I, I rock with Rise, Rise Armament, and they said that this is the best trigger ever made. I like how they're coming though, because they're super bold for even making that statement. I like it though, but we definitely gonna have to put that to the test. But this one is Chamberlain 556223, really soft shooting gun. Like, did we ran probably 500 rounds through this thing and no issue, none whatsoever. So it's a really good rifle. And I'm really starting, this one is really starting to grow with me a lot. So it does come with that cherry bomb, so you can attach, press, and make it quiet. But radiant charging handle. Um, and I think that's it. It's pretty. Run of the mill AR-15 chambered in 5.56. Now we gotta go to the other side of the tracks and get. Woo, it was hard to get out. Go ahead and show clear, safe direction. Wow. Now we gotta go to the other side of the tracks. I can show y'all the IMI. This is also an IMI Uzi. So this one is really hard to find. Also, this one is chambered in 40. 5, 45 ACP IMI Uzi. This is the micro. So this thing, you're probably not going to see this again after you've seen this on this channel because this thing is crazy. If I can see which side is on. Okay, if you guys can see that right there, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it says IMI and it says 45 ACP. This thing is crazy. Super soft shooting gun because this thing is really heavy. This is not like their new one that has the polymer lower. This is all metal construction. So this thing is this is a beast right here, but this is a thing that you see in all those old school gangster movies. It's, as soon as you see somebody toting this, automatic bad guy, hands down. Like, no questions asked, no matter if he's saving a bus full of kids, he has this right to jail, right away. Going to jail, hands down. I am I, Uzi Chamber in 45 ACP. Now, we have something that was hiding in the back of the safe that I just really kind of forgot about, which is my FN 308. 
R20, non-reciprocating charging handle. So this is their newest one. As uh, you see, a lot of people started to complain about the charging handle, about the reciprocation of the charging handle. They said it was throwing them off or it was too much recoil. I don't know, but you know how people are. So FN did something and they said, we're going to make a non-reciprocating version. So now all the people who have the reciprocating version are now trying to get this one. But honestly, either one, it's, it's not that bad. Like, honestly, it's not that bad, but you know how people are. But yeah, this one has never been shot. Uh, this one just been hiding in the back of the safe. Never been shot, just sitting over there looking cool. And yeah, FN Scar 10 minute 308. Not much to say about this one. Now, getting into some PCCs, probably the best. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna just say it. The best PCC out there. Oh, you know what? No. You know what? Yes. Because I was gonna compare it, because basically this is built after the UMP. This is an LWRC SMG 45 chamber and 45 ATP. Let's go ahead and show clear. Make sure everything is safe on the channel. Safe direction. Wow, we in business. Anyway, like I said, this is an LWRC SMG 45 chambered in 45 ACP, which is a PCC. And this one is a pistol. Probably the best PCC out there. Now, my other option would be a UMP, especially chambered in 10 millimeter, because I I don't know, there's something about nine millimeter PCCs that just, it just doesn't really do it for me. It's fun at the range, definitely fun at the range, but if you're using it for practical reasons, I'd rather have either a 45 or a 10 millimeter or even a 357.6. And I think Tommy Build makes 357.6 and 10 millimeter. So a 10 millimeter Tommy Build would probably be my best PCC. But right after that, you know what? No, this one, I would put this one before that because I, I just like the way this one's built. This one is a heavier construction and it's built well. So yeah, I gotta go with this one. But the only reason, the only thing I don't like about this is almost everything on it is proprietary. So if you want to do any add-ons, you're definitely going to have to go after them and, you know, try to get something from them. But it, they did give you some nice flip of sight. So um, LWRC SMG 45 chambered in 45 ACP. Next, we have another crazy one. We have a double barreled AR-15 chambered in 556-223. Now, this one's a little different from the pistol. This one, the triggers work independently of each, of each other. So basically, you can all day long, you can go be going for that left trigger and then decide to switch it to that right trigger. So they, they are completely independent. Like the left trigger obviously controls the left barrel and left mag. So you got two different mags in there. And for the charging handle, the charging handle will charge both of those rounds. So with every pull of the trigger, you're either firing left, right, or if your hands is big enough, you can fit in there and fire both of them. The most fun you're gonna have with the Air 15 firing two rounds at the same time. Like, I don't know. This is my Gilboa chamber, the Gilboa snake chambered in 556. Not much to say about it, but this thing looks crazy. All right, so now we have probably one of the funniest guns to see people shoot on the TV, which is the Desert Eagle fire chambered in 50 AE. And this one is in that case color hearted finish. And this one is kind of hard to find too because they don't pump them out a lot because, you know, it's kind of a novelty, honestly, but it's definitely a cool gun to have. And I that's why I had to get two. Like, just like the 500, I had to get two of the 50 AEs. Now, this is the one that you see on TV that people shoot in with absolutely no recoil. Like, it's a 22. So, I mean, set it off. All these crazy movies that you see people having a 50 AE, Desert Eagle, they're always shooting it, not even breaking the sweat with the wrist. Like, it's just the craziest thing, but that's what separates TV from reality. Because if you shoot this, like they're shooting it on the TV, you're probably gonna hurt something. So, Desert Eagle chambered in 50 AE, case color hardy. These things look crazy. In my opinion, the best looking Desert Eagle. Now, I know people's gonna say the Tiger Stripe or the Gold or something like, I think this is definitely the best looking desert eagle y'all let me know in the comments all right so next we have my favorite backpack gun which is my maximum defense this one is chambered in 762 by 39 that's why i like it and usually 76 usually ar platforms that are chambered let's go ahead and show clear first nothing in there uh, safe direction and what's funny about this is i did put that geisley three gun in here so this thing runs like a champ but like i was saying um 762 doesn't usually run well in ar platforms but this one runs really well so that's why i really like this one and it's in such a small package like this one i'm surgical with this one especially at distance so massive defense chambered in 762 by 39 this one is a boss right here now, speaking of AKs, you have to come 
to an original AK, which is my arsenal, SAM 7 SF. SF stands for side folding stock. So, I mean, it can make it a little bit compact, you know, a little more compact than it is. They can knock it out, put it back in action, and we have it there. But this is my arsenal, A, not arsenal, AF. Yeah. This is my arsenal, SAM 7 SF, chambered in 762 by 39. This one does come with a milled receiver, so this one is heavy this one's heavy duty and this one also comes with the enhanced trigger as you see right there that flat trigger so it doesn't look the way most AKs look this thing is and it honestly it fires really well so that's the take up and that's the break 762 by 39 AK 47 this thing is probably the best AK I think this would be the best AK Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments now this one is honestly really special to me this one was Inspired by a subscriber. A subscriber actually told me about this one at his local shop, so you know I had to grab it. This one came from a movie. This is, if y'all watched Terminator 2, and he was walking the dude down in like the janitor's area, Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger pulled out the Rose Box, and that's what we have here. The Rose Box J-Day anniversary, as you see it on the box, I don't know if you guys can see it, J Day anniversary rose box, and yeah, I fired this one once and then kind of put it back in here because it's it is what it is, it's not really something you want to fire a lot. But this was 50 out of 300, so there's only 300 of them made. But basically, it's a lever action uh, if I can get this to work, the lever action 12 gauge. So, yeah, that's gonna hurt your hand, especially if you're firing slugs or something like that. Lever action 12 gauge, and this thing I'm never getting rid of. Especially because one of my subscribers was like, that's Obi style. He thought of me enough to like send me the link. And yeah, I had to grab one. They only had two of them. So since then, I haven't seen another one. But yeah, J-Day Anniversary. And they even give you roses in here. J-Day Anniversary, Chamber Day 12 day. Next, we have this really light Honey Badger with a Geisley trigger on it. Like I told you, I love the way Q does their thing. Like I love the way they do their colors. They're anodizing to the metal, so this is not a Cerakote, this is an anodized uh, metal. Like, it's just straight to the metal. Now, I don't know if this makes, if it, the, if it protects the metal, I would think the Cerakote protects it a little bit better, but this one definitely looks different. Like, when you see these colors, when you see this platform, you know that's by Q, and I think that's what they did with their marketing. So I think their marketing is kind of ingenious in that way. But it has a really nice trigger. Let's go ahead and show y'all that trigger. I think it's this two-stage trigger. Yep, there's that wall, really nice wall, and then that fire. This thing is really light trigger, like really nice. Also, it had, does come with that cherry bomb, just like the sugar weasel somewhere. It does come with that cherry bomb so you can throw some pressure on it, but yeah, this one is a nice one. And it comes with a radiant charging handle, just like the sugar weasel and just like the maximum defense. So, Q Honey Badger, chambered in 300 black ounces, I didn't say that already. Last look. Now, we have one that I've been looking for for a while. This is my IWI Galil Ace Gen 1, chambered in 762 by 39. This is my Galil Ace pistol chambered in 762 by 39 Gen 1. Man, this one I was looking for for a while, and I finally found it out at the Eagle Shows. Man, that's why I go to these shows, man. That's why you gotta go to these shows because you're not finding this at a store. Like, you're not just gonna be finding this sitting on the wall. Like, come on, man. And I cannot believe I found this. That's why you gotta go early, too. IWI, the little A, because this is a rare one. This is a collectible piece right now, honestly, because they discontinued them. They're not making them no more. So, IWI, the little A pistol chambered in 762 by 39. Now, my favorite, one of my favorite long range or longer range guns. It's my ma not maximum defense. It's my Daniel Defense DD M4 V7 Pro with, like I told y'all, let your it's clear with that rise armament trigger. Y'all go ahead and check that single safe trigger out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at that reset. <laughs> this thing is a dream to shoot. I can let this go so. Fast and this thing looks gorgeous. I love, like, it's, honestly, this is not a, everybody's cup of tea, but I love the silver with the red accents and the black. Like, I think this is a dream gun. Like, 
this is this is one of my top rifles honestly like 18 inch barrel it's a little bit heavy depending on how strong you are or if you hit the gym or not but honestly you can really tote this thing like this thing is a really nice platform to have and anybody anybody i let shoot this always loves it daniel defense bdm4 v7 pro this is the pro next we got what people would call the best listen to that it's so smooth it's like glass but next we got what people would call the best shotgun ever made and that is a benelli m4 this is the h2o with the adjustable stock so you got to have the adjustable stock you know, a lot of them come with the fixed stock some people might like the fixed stock but this one is the adjustable stock and you see we got that door breacher device at the end of it but yeah this one is used by the marines so this has to be one of the toughest. Also, what a lot of people, what a lot of you guys might know it from is that John Wick movie. The Benelli M4. So, I mean, a lot of you guys might put more emphasis on the John Wick than actually the Marines using it, but this is proven by the Marines. So this is definitely a tough shotgun. If you want something that's gonna be damn near 100% reliable, at least in the 12 gauge world, definitely go with the Benelli M4. You don't have to go with the H2O, but if you want to look the best, you go you go with the H2O. Now, taking a trip back to the other side of the tracks, we got an M11. We got an M11 chambered in 9mm. Now, this one does got a little collectible value because this one is 112 out of 200. Only 200 of those bad boys made, and this one is in that hard chrome finish. Let's go ahead and show clear. Knock it in there, take direction. We good to go. But yeah, this one is... You know, hood rat gun all sorts of stuff. Whenever you see somebody with these in the in the movies, you already know it is going to be a bad guy. And this thing, it, I've seen it at a show. Instantly, your eyes is going to go straight to it at, at a steal. That's why I hit these shows, man. That's why I definitely got to hit these shows. And with that, I got to have my Mr. El Chapo Classic, my American Classic, chambered in 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter hard chrome. This thing is a beauty right here. Like you can, you have to like, regardless, you have to appreciate how good this thing looks, especially with these lock grips. That thing is not flipping out of your can and you cannot be a 1911 trigger. Just check that trigger out. Perfect trigger. You cannot beat it. So this is my American Classic chambered in 10 millimeter. You, if you have a collection, you gotta have a 1911. Not to say that you gotta have a hood rat classic, but you gotta have a 1911. Now, since we was over there with the hood rats, now we gotta go back and be a little accurate, a little bit more practical. And with that, we got my CZ TSO chambered in nine millimeter. Tactical Sport Orange. Basically the same thing as the Parrot, but without all the trimming. So first of all, I wanna let y'all know that this is probably one of the lightest triggers on a pistol that I've ever felt. Like, whenever I let somebody shoot this, I have to warn them, I have to let them see the trigger first. I have to let them dry fire the trigger first because if they just shoot it, guaranteed almost accidental discharge almost every time. So I have to let them dry fire it and then they can, you know, actually take some shots with it. But look at how light this trigger is. So that's the take up and that's it, you in action. So this is probably one of the most accurate pistols that I have. And I just, I only shoot it with iron sights. And it has, comes with a gas pedal too. And you know I had to throw them lock grips on there because they just feel like these are the aggressive ones too. Extended mag roll for quicker reloads. <laughs> but extended mag roll, regular grips, and mag release. So, and this thing comes with a gas pedal, man. This thing feels so good in my hand. So yeah, CZ, TSO, Tactical Sport Orange, that crazy light trigger. Yeah. Now I know a lot of you is probably gonna say the people who at least don't know, probably gonna say, oh, but didn't you just show that gun? No, I showed something similar to it. But this is the IWI Galil Ace Pistol chambered in 308. This is also a super hard one to find. And I found this brand new. Sitting in the back of somebody's shop. They came to the show to showcase it. And yeah, I had to grab it. Had to grab it. Got it for the craziest deal. That's why I hit these shows. Because this thing, you're not going to find this ever. Like this is just a crazy piece, man. I'm, I'm loving these. These Gen 1s, classic. The 308, 762, and the 545, the rarest ones. I, I can still find the 556, but yeah, the other ones, the Gen ones, the best. And I love these grips. So these grips that come with the rail behind them. So all you have to do is slide these grips up. If I can get it out. All you have to do is slide these grips up, and you got extra rail space because you want to attach a light or something like that. So IWI, and if you didn't hear me before, 
those Uzis that I said I am I, these are the same company, but these are after they switched to IWI. So IWI chambered in 308. This thing, now I know this is an 11 inch barrel and people are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's not practical. What you want practical is something like this. If you want 308, this, you're gonna have the most fun at a, any range that you, you ever know with a 308. So definitely gonna leave a really big boom, a really big, Fireball, so if you want to have fun, you grab this. You want to be practical, you grab this. Now, we got another Hood Rat Classic right here. We got that big old Mac Dime chambered in 45 ATP. This is a whole 150 pounds right here. This thing damn near weighs what the 50 BMG weighs. This thing is all steel, so it's gonna make that 45 round seem like a 22. Like this thing is crazy. And this thing obviously comes off the little barrel extension. But yeah, this thing is just nasty. But it doesn't really fit my hands too well because anytime I grip, anytime I grip it, because my hands is you know bigger than the grip, the mag comes out. They did not engineer this to be the most accurate gun. I don't know why they engineered this, honestly, but yeah, it's to be fired rapidly. So I don't know why they put the mag release right there, but I guess it's for people with smaller hands whose hands won't kind of come down past there. So once again, Masterpiece Arms Mac 10 chambered in 45 ACP. Now, what we have here is my zombie apocalypse shotgun, double barrel DP12 chambered in 12 gauge. Now this one holds, I think 18 rounds. So 16 in the two, um, no, I think it's 16 rounds. Um, seven in each tube and you can put two in the head. So with each pump, you get two trigger pulls. So I, I think it fires the left one and then the right one and then you have to pump again and so on and so forth. So really tough 12 gauge. It, it does have a really nice spring in that butt pad to kind of eat up some of that recoil and it is really heavy, heavy construction. They did start putting these in movies to kind of make them a little bit more popular, but I think it was in like Gemini Man and the new Terminator. They was toting these, but yeah, this is, it looks like a tank and it's obviously a really heavy duty shotgun. So zombie apocalypse shotgun, DP-12. Next, we have the best AK pistol ever. I don't care what anybody says. This is the best AK pistol ever. Let me know, argue with me in the comments. Go ahead, like, because I, I don't care. This, this is my Arsenal Sam 7K AK-47 pistol. Imported from Bulgaria, milled receiver, it got the flash hire from Bulgaria. And it also has a pick rail in the back so you can attach a brace or something like that. The, the safeties are ambidextrous, so you could use it from this side and that will actuate that side and so on and so forth. And it also has a hinge dust cover. So in case y'all didn't know the people who's not AK people, the worst part of cleaning an AK is trying to manipulate that dust cover back in. So the fact that this is hinged, all you have to do is slap it down and be back in business. And it also comes with the flashlight. So that's super rare already. The flashlight is about like three, four, five hundred dollars by itself. So everything imported from Bulgaria. So this is and it shoots like a dream. Only thing I don't like about it is that they put the mount right underneath this rear sight. So if you want to mount like an optic on it or something, you're gonna have to have something that sits higher than this rear sight, which is just which is just dumb. I, I don't I don't know why they did it, but it is what it is. That being said, it's still the best AK-47 pistol out there. Y'all argue in the comments. All right, so next we have another one from Benelli from the people over at Italy. Well, this is my Benelli M3. Now, the reason why I grabbed this one because this, I feel like this is an underrated gun. I feel like this is a really cool gun with really nice features. One of them being, this can switch from going semi-auto. I know you guys seen the little charging handle right there, to pump. Like you can switch this to pump and then really pump it all day long or switch it to semi-auto where you would take this Lock that in place, and then you can use the semi-auto function. Semi-auto function on this side, so y'all probably wouldn't see that. Or you can switch this out, and then use the pump. So this kind of reminds me of the Spaz 12, because as y'all know, the Spaz 12, which is in like Jurassic Park and stuff like that, that can go from semi-auto to pump. But those are damn near impossible to find, and if you do find it, there, some, a lot of them are going to be beat up, but some of them are going to be, they're going to ask on the leg. If it's in good condition, you're going to be paying a, maybe over five, six for it. So, and the fact that this is from Benelli, really credible company. So, 
Really good platform. Benelli M3. Y'all let me know. M3 or M4? Which one are you going? Semi-auto or semi-auto and pump? But that one's more proven to be more reliable. So next we have my Charles Daly triple threat chambered in 12 gauge. This one is just a crazy looking shotgun. Just the fact that it had three barrels right there. It just looks crazy, honestly. So that's where I got it. But this one is actually considered a shotgun. So it's just a pistol grip shotgun because the overall barrel length is I think over 18 inches and the overall length is over 26 or 27 or something like that. But it's still considered a shotgun and it actually comes with a stock in the back so you can switch it from the pistol grip or the stock. But I chose to leave the pistol grip on it because it just makes it look even more cooler. So Charles Daly triple threat, you got three pulls. So as soon as you open it up, as soon as you break it open, you put your shells in there. So as you close it, you got three trigger pulls. Bow, 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 and then you have to do it all over again. Charles Davy triple threat, triple honcho. Next, we got this bad boy right here, which is my Alexander Arms 50 Bay Wolf. You see that big old tank break right there? Yes, this is a 50 caliber AR-15. This thing is crazy. Honestly, I can't really speak on this, you just have to shoot it. So if you ever see me at the range, let me know and I'll bring this and then you can really see what I'm talking about with this thing because everybody who shot it, they know what I'm talking about. But yeah, Alexander Arms, 50 Bay Wolf. This is a tough one right here. Next, we got another weird one. This looks like something out of a Star Wars spaceship movie. I don't know, this one is really weird. This is a, this is like two pistols. Like when I got this one transferred, I have to transfer two guns because they consider it two guns because Obviously you got two receivers, but yeah, they are both Ruger 1022s. And basically all you do is pull this little trigger right here, pull that trigger right there, crank that up. And yeah, it will, it'll be like a little mini Gatling gun basically for 22. So yeah, and it also comes with a stand so you can use that too, or you could just hold it up and just try to crank that out right there. So either way, it's a fun gun, especially for kids to shoot like I think it's a pretty cool platform, but I haven't shot this one in a while, honestly. All right, so next we have my PTR chambered in 308. This one I got specifically because I got the Galil. And then I'll, you, you, you'll see that story. So I'm gonna do a story on that, on that first Galil that I got, but that's why I got this one right here. So roller delayed system and it's a 308 and it's a pistol. So it's also a short platform for 308. Got some folding brace on it. But yeah, PTR, these are probably the cheapest mags that you can find. Let me know which one you like better. You like the PTR or you like the IWI Galil Ace Pistol Chamber in 308. So PTR 308. Next, we have my Bossala Firearm AK-47 12 gauge. This is a really tough one. Hard chrome, this one actually comes in titanium nitrate also. Titanium nitrate, which is the gold finish, and that one's a super durable finish. But yeah, this one is chambered in 12 gauge, an AK-47 El Chapo looking gun, chambered in 12 gauge, and I'm loving it. Like, honestly, I'm loving the chrome with the wooden furniture, and I actually met the owner of this company, really cool people. I was where they're out in Pennsylvania, met them at the Oak Show, and yeah, this thing goes crazy. One of my favorite AK-12 gauges out there, because this thing runs like a champ. Okay, so now we at the other side of the tracks once again. Welcome back, welcome back. Right here we have the original. Y'all should already know what this is. Y'all should already know what this is. We have the original Hang Out The Car Sideways Tech 9. Now this is the original Tech 9 before they changed it to DC 9 so you could actually see Tech 9 on here and you see the Miami and everything like that. So the original Tech 9, this is hard to find it to say Tech 9 instead of DC 9. So yeah, this is the AKA Jamomatic. So, and honestly, when I shot this, I've never experienced a jam until you like turn it, until you like try to have fun and shoot it like how you see in the movies, like Boys in the Hood, Terminator, all those movies. Then you start experiencing issues, but I've never had any issues with it just shooting it like this. So yeah, not much to say about it. Jamomatic, I was going through a little old school gangster gun collection phase when I bought all the Tech 9s, Mac 10, Mac 11s, Uzis, all of those was like, yeah, that was a little short phase for me. So not much to say about it. Chambered in nine millimeter, horrible trigger, and it just looks bad. Like honestly, it just it just looks bad. Like when you see this, 
you go to jail. Like you just go to jail. That's all it is. All right, so with the Tech 9 being a really good CCW, we have to bring another CCW in here that kind of offsets that, and that is the Staccato CS. So Staccato, what did they say? Staccato, but smaller. And honestly, yeah, I would give it that. Honestly, this one shoots better than the C2. So I don't know how they do it. I don't know what they did to it, but this one shoots really well. So Staccato CS, not too much to say about it. Only thing I don't like is the proprietary mags. They could have made it a little, the grips a little bit bigger. I know they was trying to maintain a slim profile, but I mean, we all have them 2011 mags, but for this one, you have to buy the proprietary mags that spit, that's dare to fit only this. So that's the only thing I don't like about it, but it is what it is. Staccato CS chambered in nine millimeter. Next, we got this bad boy. This is my Tommy gun made by Auto Ordinance. This thing, everybody should recognize this. You watch any old school movies, even if you watch Home Alone. He's the guy, the guy who told his girl to get out of the house. He could give her to the count of 10, but he actually gave her to the count of three, was toting one of these bad boys. But I think Bonnie and Clyde even told it to you. So the original gangster people. So uh, I don't say IWI. Auto Ordinance, Tommy Gun, chambered in 45 ACP. Now this. I said the MAC-10 was going to be the, the softest shooting 45, this hands down is. Cause this, oh my, this is heavy. Like this thing, and even the bolt is really heavy. So you're not gonna feel this. It's gonna be a joy to shoot 45, but 45 gets expensive shooting it like that. Now, I know I said I don't like the nine millimeter PCCs, but this one's a little different. I can't tell too much about this one, but this one, if you shoot it, you you know what I'm talking about. This one I call the Green Goblin because this one is really nasty and it can get really nasty. Go ahead and show clear, nothing in there. So to appreciate this one, you actually have to shoot it. But yeah, CZ Scorpion chambered in nine millimeter PCC. Probably the best one. Next, ooh, wait. That thing is going nasty and dry. Next, we have my Micro Draco. Now, everybody knows what a Micro Draco is because they put it in a song. Once you put it in a song, everybody got to have one. You got to have a Hellcat, and with the Hellcat, you got to have a Micro Draco. So this one is chambered in 762 by 39. And honestly, a lot of people say that this isn't accurate. Like, you can't hit the, the broad side of a bar. You can't. I hit at 100 yards with this, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people can do way better than that. But honestly, I think it's an iconic platform. The smallest platform for an AK-47, and it's just easily recognizable. As you see, I did put the whole grips on there, so make it feel a little bit better. But yeah, this is, honestly, it's nice to me. And it's chambered in 7.62 by 39. I'm loving it. Okay, so now we have probably the funnest 22 to, to shoot. I mean, this thing looks tougher than it actually is. This one is chambered in 22. This is my HK MP5 chambered in 22 long rifle. There's really not much to say about it. Roller delayed system. And it got, it's considered a rifle because it does got a stock and this is a barrel extension. So it makes it into a rifle. And the stock is adjustable so you could collapse it. If I can get it right, there we go. Makes it a little smaller package, but it looks tough. It definitely looks tough, but it, then it's gonna shoot that 22 round, then you're gonna really remember what it is. Next, we have this bad boy right here, which is an I. This one kind of took me by surprise, honestly. I bought this because I seen it in somebody's collection, and I just thought it looked cool. And then I seen it at the at one of the shows, I think in Denver or something like that. And I seen it, and I was just like, it looks really cool. But then they discontinued it. This is my IWI Uzi Pro, the more modern day Uzi. And this one is chambered in nine millimeter. Nine millimeter, but the only thing I don't like about this is the polymer lower. They said they was trying to save weight. I'm like, would you expect the people to still carry this? Like, what do you, like save weight for what? Like, it's already really bulky. But they did discontinue it, and now people are asking the arm and leg for it on gun broker or whatever. So it is tapered in nine millimeter. If I didn't say that already, like the old one, go ahead and make sure it's here. But yeah, you know how it is. Like now that it's discontinued, now people want it. At least some people. It does have a folding brace. It does have a rail up top, rail at the bottom. Um, the trigger is absolutely horrendous. There's the trigger, there's the trigger pull. Really loud trigger, so and it does come with some iron sights too. So you can put an optic on it, and you can also put some iron sights. They really try to tack this one out. I I'll give it to them. They really tried with this one, but it's just I don't know. It's really just a fun gun to shoot. So I W I Uzi Pro chambered in nine millimeter. Now we have this hunk of metal, which is actually 
really accurate, really accurate. Like when I took this out and I shot it at, I think it was at 75 yards. This thing was a dream to shoot. It's so soft shooting and it's because it's nine millimeter. So this is a M11 carbine rifle. I don't know what this is, but it's like a Mac 11. That's a rifle and a carbine and it's something, so, but it's really fun to shoot. Like you have to trust me on this one. I know people's gonna look at it and be like, oh, what is that? It looked like something scissor, scissor hands or something would have, but yeah, it's nine millimeters nothing special but it just looks cool like if you were passing by and you see a regular ar-15 and then you see this you're gonna stop and look at this and that's kind of why i got it so i told you my collection is gonna be really weird so now we have this spanish i think this is spanish spanish shotgun this one has two triggers also for the right and left barrel this one is chambered in 10 gauge so if you shot a 12 gauge and that's too much for you, I wouldn't recommend shooting this bad boy at all. So this one's way stronger than that one. So this one, I, I chopped the barrel to 18 and a half inches just to give it, you know, more of a push, you know. I mean, me, I like to test the limits. But yeah, um, Spanish 12, 10 gauge, I keep wanting to say 12 gauge. Spanish 10 gauge um, shotgun. Not really, not much to say about it, but fun gun to shoot. Now we have another spaceship gun that haven't been shot in forever man this thing is my ts12 by iwi and honestly i like this because this one holds 16 is it 16 yeah 16 rounds of 12 gauge so in every trigger pull in every trigger not in every trigger pull in every tube holds five rounds of 12 gauge and then after you're done with that you push this button here and you just rotate it and it automatically feeds the next round and you just get to going and with that clear you do the same thing over and over again so it's a really nice platform but i feel like there's so much that can go wrong with this one so i wouldn't put it as reliable but i mean it's a fun gun to shoot especially with shooting 12 gauge you can mag dump 12 gauge so ts12 chamber and 12 gauge next we have my walter q5 match i really haven't done what needs to be done with this gun like i really haven't ran it through its paces this one kind of just been sitting there but it's a super smooth gun i remember shooting the polymer frame i shot the polymer frame at the range so and they said they have a steel frame so i was like the steel frame gotta be way better and then lock grip said they make grips for it so i was like it's a match made in heaven so i have to grab it once again this is my walter q5 match steel frame with the lock grips on it it is optic ready but i didn't throw anything on it so i have to say i barely shoot i probably took it to range once but it look at that slide is super smooth but the only thing i hate about it is that trigger the trigger they should have put a better trigger now in some of their collectible ones they do have a better trigger in there but i think that's the only thing that's holding this this gun back is that trigger next we have my collectible from a show i bought this for four i think like 300 or 400. i bought this at a show and the guy didn't know what he had and he sold it to me for a steal this is my cop chambered in 357 magnum four barrel 357 magnum now this is a collectible piece this one was in all sorts of movies and the, the, the one people might know the best was bad boy at the end of the scene when he kind of you know pulled it out he pulled out his shoe or his sock or something like that and really was going to give it to martin lawrence and then they just really emptied the clip on him but yeah this way he pulled out cop chambered in 357 magnum derringer and i think 38 special also so there it is now if you watch my show videos you see that i always every time i pass this gun i always say the best 5.7 that you can grab is the Smith & Wesson. Now, everybody would say, oh, you didn't give the FN a fair shot because I did do a comparison with the FN, the Ruger, the Smith, and one more I'm missing. Can't think of it right now. But yeah, I did do a comparison with all of them, and I let other people do it too, and this one just reigned supreme. Like, this one just came out on top. They just did something special with, I don't know if you can tell, but that barrel in there, it rotates as that slide goes back. So that's something to help recall. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of the specs, but yeah, this one, this one is special. They really did their thing with this one, and it feels really good in the hands and super easy to rack. Like I don't know how this one shoots so smooth and so soft compared to all the other five sevens, but yeah, Smith and Wesson definitely did their thing with this one. Now that was the best five seven. Now we came to the best ten millimeter of at least of this year 
which is the FN. And what, what makes it the best 10 millimeter is the fact that it's optics ready. The fact that it has a threaded barrel for suppressors. The fact it has a light rail. It has suppressor high sights. And it also comes with 22 plus one rounds. So 23 rounds of 10 millimeter. The best 10 millimeter, I, I think. Like, come on, you can't beat it. What else can you ask for? And they have this in flat, dark earth, and you can have it in black. So, I mean, what else can you ask for in that? And they even have a flush magazine if you want to rock with that. So FN 510 chamber in 10 millimeter. And they also make the 545 chamber in 45 ACP. But that one only has 18 plus one of 40, but 18 plus one of 45 ACP. It's crazy. Like, honestly, it's crazy. Like, this thing is a game changer. So FN 510 chambered in 10 millimeter. Now we have the little guy. This is a really slept on pistol. Like, honestly, I keep telling people and everybody who tries it loves it. The FN 503 chambered in nine millimeter. Now, when you first grab this, you're going to be like, that feels so weird and it's so awkward it'll probably be really bad to shoot but after you shoot it you really understand the they really knew what they was doing with this thing and this thing it gives a super slim profile if you could tell like it's about as thick as my finger like my finger will cover the entire thing so if you're really trying to conceal this or you're wearing something tight or you're wearing something slim or whatever the case may be this is gonna be your best bet for concealed care i think this comes with nine plus one so magazine holds nine, you put one in the head, 10 rounds of nine millimeter, FN 503. Try it out. And this one also comes with a light attached to the frame. Try it out. I can almost, I'm not gonna 100%, I can almost guarantee you're gonna like it. Now, here we have my shockwave. This is, this is probably one of my oldest guns. This is probably one of my oldest guns that I still have. That is crazy, man. This is like grandpa right here. I think this is the oldest gun that I have. No, my high point. My high point is the oldest gun that I have, and we're we're I spoiled the surprise. But yeah, honestly, this one, this is old reliable right here. Like I've never had an issue with this one. This I can I'm super accurate with this. Like damn near surgical with it. But it's nothing special. Mossberg shockwave chambered in 12 gauge, and this one was the one that came in the special tube. I don't know the specific name. But it's the survival edition that came in that orange tube. And yeah, 12 gauge, Mossberg Shockwave. Now, this is my Derringer. Now, I got something else coming for this, but this is my Derringer 357 Magnum. As you see, it loads really weird. So you gotta basically flip the you gotta flip the barrel up. And but the only thing I like about this is the barrels are interchangeable. So in case you don't want this 357 38 special barrel, you can interchange it for a nine millimeter. You can interchange it for a 45. I think you can do it a 45, but I'm not sure. But yeah, you can interchange it with a whole bunch of different barrels and just use the same frame and you know work it like that. But yeah, this one is chambered in 357 Magnum. This thing is horrible on my hands to shoot. Probably one of the worst guns in my hands to shoot. So yeah. 357 Magnum Derringer. Next, we have my Taurus GX4 XL. Now this one, the only thing that's missing is the optics. I really wish they would have sent me the optic ready version, but this is honestly a good gun to shoot. This is like $250. Like this is like super cheap, but it gives you a really good trigger, gives you a really good purchase on the firearm. Like this is, honestly, this is a good first gun. Like I would pick this over a high point all day. And I think this actually costs more than a high point. So you are gonna be in a different league. But yeah, really nice gun, really decent trigger. This trigger is better than a Glock. So I'm put it right there. This trigger is better than a Glock trigger. And that's the trigger pull. That's the reset. Wow, we back in business. So Taurus GX4 and they come with a lifetime warranty. So you really can't beat that. Next we got, you know, a little budget AR. This is from Paul Metal. This is a 300 blackout AR pistol chambered in 300 blackout. And it's from Palmetto State Armory. Nothing too special, but really good, you know, fun gun. I never had really had any issues with this. A lot of people really talk about Palmetto State Armory a lot, but they provide some really nice things, especially from being an American brand. Next, we're getting into some of the worst firearms that I have in the collection. And this one, this seemed like such a cool and fun idea. But this is, what is this, a Pfizer? Uh, I don't know what this is. Heiser, Heiser something. And this one is chambered in 762 by 39. This one is chambered in an AK round. And it's a pistol, an actual AK pistol. But this, the only thing about this is like playing Russian roulette. 
because you never know when it's going to go off. You you will be sitting there and you'll be pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and then it'll go off. Sometimes it'll go off on the third pull. Sometimes it'll go off on the sixth pull. You never know when it's going to go off. And when it does go off, it's basically a hammer at that point because it's you're not unless you have like some pliers or a flathead or a screwdriver, something to knock this thing out. You're not going to get it open. This thing locks up like crazy. So that's why the company probably went under but yeah the heiser chambered is 762 by 39 and they also make 556 i think they make 300 blackout and nine millimeters so yeah they they thought there was on some next we have old faithful glock this is probably the best glock honestly is between this and um i want to say the glock 19x because the reason why I say this, this is the Glock 29 chambered in 10 millimeter. The reason why I say this one is because first of all, it's the most powerful Glock chambered in 10 millimeter. And then you can go from the smaller, cause a lot of people will be like, oh no, I should grab the Glock 20 or the Glock 40. You can't get smaller with the Glock 40. I can grab the Glock 40 barrel and just put it in here and it'll run fine. So with the Glock 40, you can't go smaller. With the Glock 20, you can't go smaller. So if you want to conceal it and have it in a compact package, you're you're just out of luck if you if it's not that size but this one the smallest package and if i wanted the full velocity of the 10 millimeter round i can grab that glock 40 barrel and throw it in this or i can grab the glock 20 barrel and throw it in this and then i have the full velocity and then i can take it out whenever i want to and just rock with this so glock 29 chambered in 10 millimeter i wish it was optics ready i think the new ones are optics ready no the new glock 20 is optics ready so they need to grab a 29. Let me know in the comments. I, I think they don't make a 29 that's optics ready, but yeah, Glock 29 chambered in 10 millimeter. Now we have the worst gun that I ever shot. The worst gun, this gun literally will draw blood every time I shoot it because it will just scrape, it will just come back and just be sawing at my hand. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just sawing at my hand and it's just horrible so we might have a the first official penny giveaway with this bad boy right here so this is a jimenez arms chambered in 380 380 this thing looks so small in my hands it's just so awkward to hold but yeah jimenez arms chambered in 380 not much to say about that next we have another shotgun i think this was one of the first shotguns that i bought the first long shotguns that i bought this one is a dickinson chambered in 12 gauge and yeah honestly there's not much to say about it plain jane shotgun this is a budget shotgun but this thing runs like a beast and it really feels good the stock feel good the grip feel good never had any issues with it hard chrome finish i know i think it's a nickel plated i don't know either hard chrome or nickel plated but yeah really nice shotgun chambered in 12 gauge all right, so last but not least, no collection is complete without having at least one high point. Now, this is chambered in 45 ACP and it's only 100 and what the, what's this, like 120 or something like that. I think it's the best bang for your buck at that price range because you get a full warranty. You get a full lifetime warranty regardless of the issue you send it back to them they'll fix it or they'll send you another one whatever the case may be so we got a high point but this is in that big nasty green and this thing this slide is literally a hammer like this thing you're not gonna fill up 45 so honestly like people say what they say about high points and yeah if you're shooting something like a staccato or uh 1911 or a cz or something like that yeah you're you're, you're gonna notice how crappy this is but if this is all you can afford You'd rather have something than have nothing. So I would definitely not knock a high point. A high point is really, I'm not gonna say it's a real good gun, but it's a gun that'll run and it'll do its job. So high point 45, and that's what we're gonna end this thing. Now, you remember what I said before, if you've seen a gun in this collection that you have not seen or heard of before, you have to hit that subscribe button. So you gotta hit that subscribe button because I already know there's something in here that you haven't seen or heard of, especially that Uzi. That commemorative Uzi, I know a lot of people probably never seen that before. So you gotta hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We're going crazy all 2024. I hope everybody has a good year. We're gonna end that off here. This is not all, but this is all that's here. If y'all wanna see a part two, let's get this to 10,000 likes. And let me know in the comments if you wanna see a part two. 
I'll grab everything that wasn't in this video and we'll do a whole nother long video and yeah, that's what we'll get after it. But yeah, let me know in the comments this thing gets in 10,000 likes. We'll do a part two. We're definitely going crazy all 2024. Y'all boys stay tuned. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch y'all next video. Yeah.